Hey everyone, welcome back to ELO Lessons Online. Okay, we are moving on to part 3 of macroeconomics. I'm going to be covering aggregate supply in this video. So in my previous part, okay, I'll leave a link in the description as well as the top and corner of the screen. I went through AD, okay, aggregate demand. Alright, a lot of you guys um, should already know what AD is by now. Okay, it's actually a very, very simple concept to understand. So the next important concept in the whole of macroeconomics would be to to make sure you you get a hang of this thing called AS, okay? Because AD and AS, they work hand in hand. Okay, so whatever it is, whenever you're drawing your graphs, whenever you're finding um, whether your aims are being achieved, your macro aims are being achieved, you have to always fall back on AD and AS to kind of like guide you, okay, in terms of your, in terms of your economic analysis. Okay, so this part is going to be very, very important. Let's go right in. Okay, definition of AS. So AS essentially measures the volume of goods and services produced okay, within an economy at a given price level. All right? So it's kind of like your micro supply. Okay, actually, it's the same thing. Okay, except we're looking at a bigger scale. So it's the volume of output produced given a certain price, Okay, which is why um, it represents the ability of an economy to produce goods and services in the short run and the long run. Okay, so there's this thing that you'll learn called the short run AS and then there'll be this thing that you're going to learn called the long run AS. Make sure that you don't get confused with the two of them. They are very different and um, AS can affect um, real GDP and GPL in both the short run and long run. Okay, whereas as we've gone through in the previous video, okay, AD tends, tends uh, to only affect, um, have, a, have a huge impact okay, in the short run. Okay, so it's also a reflection of the productive capacity of an economy. Productive capacity basically means the maximum possible output of an economy. So the AS will show you, okay, how much your maximum output will be in an economy when all resources are being employed. Okay? Alright, so the AS diagram, okay, it usually has um, three different parts to it, okay? In this case, I labeled it by color. Um, we have got the blue part over here, and then the pink, and then your red part. Okay, so the blue part over here is considered, I'm going to just call it for now, okay, below full employment. Okay, full employment, we always use it as FN, okay? The pink part is at, sorry, not at, sorry, it is near full employment. And the red part is known as at full employment. Okay, so I'll be using these three terms quite a bit later on. Just um, take note of what they kind of are. Okay, so your y-axis is always your general price level and then your x-axis is real GDP, just as a refresher. Alright, so the different sections of the AS curve. So the blue part that we have just seen just now, it is, is initially okay when AS is horizontal. Okay, this is the, re the reason behind this is because most of your resources are actually unemployed. Okay, that's why it's just a straight line. Okay, so that means your marginal cost does not rise with a higher output. Okay, take that in for Okay, your marginal cost, the additional cost of producing another good does not rise with a increased level of output. Okay, however, increasingly as we move closer towards the band, okay, firms will then hire unemployed workers at a low wage rate. Okay, but then, um, as a result of this, yes, they are indeed willing to produce more output, but this will still be at a low price. So, essentially what this is saying, okay, is that the entire blue part is basically um, uh, stagnant, okay? No change in price, okay, that means the price does not increase even if your output increases, okay, because there are still unemployed resources. Um, resources aren't exactly, say, scarce yet, so there's no one competing. You can still increase output if you want to, depending on where AD um, coincides. Then the next part, okay, when we go around the band, okay, it is where it is near full employment. Okay, its producers will continue to increase output. However, they need to hire increasingly scarce um, factors of production. So this will increase their cost of production, resulting in an increase in price. So this is a basic demand and supply. Okay, when there is an increase in um, the hiring of factors of production, you're going to have to pay them more, right? So there will be an increase in your cost of production, and this will cause your prices to have uh, to face an upward pressure, hence increasing the prices as well. Okay, this is um we'll look more at this in the next part of the of this series, okay? Part this is what part three or four, is it part three, I think? Okay, when we're looking at the equilibrium of ADAS, that is when you will start to see all this come to play. Okay, when we have the AD and AS coinciding. Okay, and last finally the red part K is when it reaches full employment. Okay, otherwise known as FN. Uh, this is when all factors of, of production are employed and firms cannot increase production further beyond this full employment. 
Okay, so they are kind of like just stuck. Okay, so that's why at this point in time, if they want to try and increase the output, your price level will just increase like crazy because you have no more resources. You're going to have to increase rate, wage rates in order to compete for the very, very scarce resources available. This will push your general price levels up as a result of an increase in cost of production. All right. So the shift in AS, AS curve, okay, I'm going to draw it out over here for you. Um, hopefully my thing won't be too shaky. Okay, so the first case I have over here is when there is an increase. Let me use the pen instead. Okay, when there is an increase in AS, okay, an increase in productive capacity, and this results in, in the outward shift in the entire curve from AS to AS2. Okay, so firstly, we're going to label the, the, the graph. You've got GPL up here, and then you've got real GDP down here x-axis, y-axis. So we're just going to draw a very generic first curve. Something like this. Okay, it's, it's a bit crooked, but it's okay. We'll just keep it as this was, okay? AS, so there's AS1. Okay, or just AS in this case. So when there's an increase in productive capacity, okay, it means that your level of full employment increases, okay, because you're able to um, increase the maximum level of output. So what happens is that there will be an increase in AS outwards like this. From This is horrible. Let me just redo this, okay? So from AS to AS, 2. So this is what we call, okay, let's say if you were to take it at this point up here, where it reaches full employment, this is basically FN1. And when it increases productive capacity, what happens is that it becomes FN2 over here. So your full employment level increases, your productive capacity has also increased. Okay, then the next part is when there's a fall in AS. Okay, what happens is that the curve can shift from AS to AS3, which is over here. So this is when there's an increase in cost of production. Okay, in this case, your level of, um, your, your full employment level, your, your maximum output can still remain the same. Okay, however, because of the cost of production increase, it will actually cause the, shift, the curve to shift inwards instead. Okay, and last one is when there's an outward increase in AS. So this would mean that the entire curve has shifted. So when the entire curve shift, shifted, okay, let me just label the red one first. So this is AS3. So if the entire curve shifts outwards, okay, what happens is that it can actually go out to this. So this will essentially be your AS4. So this occurs when there is a fall in cost of production, hence your AS will increase, and an increase in productive capacity. This will cause an outward shift of the entire curve. Okay, this tends to usually happen, this usually tends to be called your long run AS. Okay, it usually tends to happen in the long run when there's an increase in productive capacity as well as a fall in overall cost of production. So just take note, okay, that these are roughly how your curves are going to look like. Um, yeah, so this is basically roughly what it is, okay? Okay, so the factors affecting AS, firstly, I have got what happens if there's a change in cost of production, okay? When there's a change in cost of production due to your factors of production, let's say increasing wage rates, okay, or your raw material has, has increased in price, okay, what happens is that the overall cost of production for firms will increase. For example, when oil prices increase, okay, this would cause an increase in your cost of production as well. So the increase in prices to produce the same amount of goods um, uh, would basically result in this this case of uh, a, a kind of like a lower level of national output sort of okay you will see it okay in the next part when we actually draw the curves um coinciding adas but essentially what happens is that the short run as will basically just shift outwards upwards so like that was basically the case one just now that we saw um if i were to just draw a rough sketch here it is something like this as1 to as2 so it just shifts upwards Okay, your, your productive capacity may not have changed. Okay, it doesn't mean that um, the increase in cost of production means your productive capacity may change. Okay, it just means that your short run AS will just shift inwards. Right? Okay, next part. Factors affecting AS, the second factor would be, let's say if there's a, the government steps in. Okay, so let's say there's changes to producer taxes and subsidies, let's say because of government policies. So if a government introduced taxes on production, this would cause the cost of production to rise once again. And this will cause the short run AS to fall. So it's the exact same diagram as the cost of production increase. Okay, every time cost of production increase, supply falls, AS falls. Okay, if there's an issuance of subsidies instead, this can reduce the cost of production and cause an increase in the short run AS. So this diagram will basically be the exact opposite. It will look something like this. This is AS1. It will just shift outwards. AS2. Okay. So this is roughly um, 
what you're going to be be looking at. Wait, let me wait. Actually, yeah, correct. Okay, yeah. So this this could be so this in the case whereby there's an increase in productive capacity. Okay, on the other hand, it could also increase this way. Okay, if your productive capacity stays the same. So this one is all really based on scenario. You have to look at the scenario to actually determine what um the shift in AR AS is going to be. Okay. Okay, I don't don't worry about this part. Okay, don't get confused about diagrams. I will go through it in the next video, so you don't have to worry. This part is trying to understand what are the possible factors that can affect AS. That's all you need to know. Okay, so how about the quantity of factors of production available? So the larger the larger the quantity of factors of production, the more output the economy can produce. So this leads to a rightward shift of AS and hence an increase in productive capacity. Alright, so this one will be the same graph as the initial one. Um it will basically look something like this. This is actually what the graph should be looking at. Sorry. So AS2. So the previous one was actually wrong. The cost of production. The cost of production should just be um, the same productive capacity. So your YF should not change. For Only for this one, if you increase the quantity, then your YF would change and increase from YF1 to YF2. Take note of the difference, okay? I will go through in the next video, so don't worry about it. Okay, then lastly, if there's improvements in technology and the quality of factors of production have increased, so you're looking at the quality as well as improvements in technology, um, what actually happens is that um, this will cause a fall in cost of production in the long run, as well as an increase in the long run productive capacity because your workers are more educated. They know how to get things done in a short amount of time. So they're more efficient, more productive. This will increase the long run AS of the curve. So this would be the third scenario that we saw just now. So just take note, all in all, okay, the AS can change in the short run and the long run. So you need to be wary of that. It does not just change in the short run. So usually long run AS shifts is when there's a change in productive capacity. Definitely. Okay, in the long run, uh, every economy aims to upgrade the skills of their workers as well as to increase the or improve the level of technology. And hence, this will cause an increase in the overall maximum output of an economy. So increase in investments such as plants K tend to affect both short run AS and long run AS. Okay, we'll explore more of this when it comes to economic growth and inflation. So exam requirements you need to be able to explain the various factors affecting AS in detail. I've already gone through them. Also discuss how the various factors impact real GDP and GPL along with any changes in AD. Alright, so this part is really um going to the honestly the next video will be where it's all at. That is where you really need to start understanding how the grass work and how AD and AS work hand in hand. This video just going to understand that your quality, quantity of factors of production, improvements in technology, as well as a change in cost of production due to raw materials changing or factors of production cost changing. Those are what will affect AS both in the short run and the long run. And that is all you need to know for the factors. Alright, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, I know that some parts okay, may have been a bit confusing. I will clear up the air in the next video so you don't have to read this part go and learn what the factors are understand the definition of AS and that's all you need to really uh, understand for this video alright so if you did enjoy yeah, be sure to give it a like it really does help me out a lot as well as to leave a comment okay, or questions if you have any I will answer them and do subscribe it really does help me out and um, does support the channel quite a bit as well alright so if not I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye